there's a lot of factors that play. You know, there's the stress, there's the, you know, the things you do outside the gym. Are you willing to not drink? If you have that mindset and if you're willing to sacrifice, I guess, some friendships, um, night outs, um, and just live it and breathe it kind of mindset, you know, then you're in the right game. And then you can be maybe the one person. Maybe then, maybe, maybe. only maybe. It doesn't but guarantee. You gotta, you gotta be willing to do that and have that mindset 365 days a year, every single day, for a year, and then another year, and then for a decade, two decades, and just do it. There's no shortcuts, there's no, there's no excuses. So you gotta be willing to live it, breathe it, and um, you know, if you love it, you'll do it. If you're that obsessed to become the best, you'll do it, but if you're not, you know, so big, you'll just be average. Hey, let me uh, take one second here to let you guys know that my products, the Titan Crew, are available over at Walmart. You got the pump product, get that focus on the workout, the test booster, bump it naturally, and then the joint support. You gotta keep the joints healthy, that way you can train for a lifetime. I wanna take that one minute, let's get back into the podcast, thanks again. The Mighty Thor, uh, I've always wanted to say that, man. This guy is, first of all, a ginormous human um, but he's got the personality to go with it he's a great guy um obviously world strongest man first guy to do 500 uh on the dead um or second technically he lifted a thousand pounds on the deadlift he's a freaking monster uh and what i love about him too is that he went from uh, one sport to another sport uh, and is doing so well. And then he's got so many projects because the guy is a worker. That's what I love about him. He does not stop. He does not slow down. He does not settle. He continues to change and try new things, which is fun for me because he's such a kid still. And he's got so much more of a career to go. I am going to enjoy this ride of watching him live his life and do what he's doing. Um, so, and he's also, what's cool is uh, he's on a uh, team uh, Transcend with me, and we just recently did an appearance at the Olympia. So it was nice just to hang out with him for a few hours and catch up. Uh, and I am going to go over and uh, see him at his uh, home gym or his home, his home, and train with him over there. Um, and I think it's Iceland, if I'm correct. So let's bring on this savage of a human, this barbarian of a man, uh, AKA the mountain, Big Thor. Good to see you again in such short time. I like that. Yeah, you're looking great, man. You're looking great as always. I tried the mighty Thor. Um, I I, uh, I love the fact this last couple of weeks for me, or I guess this last month, I'm around these monsters of humans. The 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 zero 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 point half point zero percent. It's like uh, I was with Martin Ford over in Dubai. I was with you in Vegas. I'm with Paul White right now, who's uh, uh, Paul White's big show. So yeah. seven footer, four fifty. And I love. Well, the you were in, uh, Mike. You were humble. You were that. You were you were yourself in that category. You have to realize that. Uh, <laughs> you are, man. If you think about your age, think about. The shape you're in, and you've been in that shape for more, more than two decades, is incredible, man. It, it is. I love that you say two decades. Um, it has been longer. It's been three decades. My apologies if you have. No, no. 1987. 1987 was when I first in the magazine. So I think before you were born. Yes. 1987. Wow, yeah. that's. It's been it's been four decades. Yeah, I my first show was in 1983. Almost and by, by 85, I was this size and this strength. That is that is that 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 gotta be close to um you that that that's just that by itself. Um uh, it's insane. It's it's insane to be that size, that strength. In that condition, where were you back back then? Was your body 
this good as like it is today? Yeah, I com I competed at the teenage uh, nationals and bodybuilding. I was winning the the teenage powerlifting and the men's power uh, powerlifting on the same days. I would compete against the men's as a teenager, and and I I started winning shows at thirteen, but by fifteen it was I was walking on stage, you know, sixteen, seventeen at two hundred and twenty five pounds ripped to the bone at that age. So, Mike, I yeah. think I was wondering. What's the secret? I think it's kind of like what you're doing. You're training. You know how like uh, you train for athletics and range of motion. You keep it longer. If if you in in understand that it's the range of motion that you're doing. It's keeping the joints healthy, keeping the stress on the body. And not giving up on that aspect, it's that bone density and the connective tissue. And, and I think the thing with you is you fully understand muscle comes and goes. But the connective tissue, if you can stay healthy, if the knees are healthy, if the back is healthy, if the elbows are healthy, you can continue to train like you do when you're 19, 20 years old. Yeah, it's funny when you say muscles come and go. And that is true for most people, but in your shoes, it isn't. The most yeah. to stay, which is <laughs> yeah. pretty crazy. But it wasn't, it's not my focus. And I think if it was my focus, I would lose it. And I, and so I always talk about what's the side effect. If I train with enough stress on the body for the connective tissue to stay healthy, the range of motion and the bone density, as we age, the bone density yeah. go more and more. Yeah. The the byproduct by eating right is I keep my muscle. Yeah. Where everybody else goes into the gym, or a majority of and people go into the same thing day in, day in day out. Like like what I liked the like um, when I trained with you was the difference in training style, the way we trained with the intensity, and uh, the you know. It was it was nice because I remember we, we, we did some bench press where we um, um, were holding the bar the opposite like reverse and it was the first time for me trying it but I loved it you know as you know like I love to try new things like you to yourself and I think you're what 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 you're trying to say here it's it's is you you're trying to tell the audience that that you you know to 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 keep the muscles you gotta shock the muscles right. To, to keep the muscles, you got to feed it, but to keep the body healthy, you got to shock it and yeah. don't go to the easy stuff. Don't go, don't run away from the range of motion. Don't start doing half reps on everything. Try to keep the body as functional as possible. Yeah. It, and, and, you know, that, that has helped me and it's, and walk into the gym with the understanding of first be an athlete, you know, and that you, you're, you're this, you're this extra large metahuman that is still athletic and that's the coolest thing for me to see it's cool to me to see you and martin ford or, or paul you guys don't fit equipment mm. but your guys's range of motion is better than a lot of bodybuilders mm. and, and that's what i don't think they realize i was watching you do incline press mm. and uh there's an extension that you do there's nothing missed you go from the bottom to the very top, yeah, and it's the full range of motion. I know that's that's elementary, but I think people miss that when they watch you. They're just focused on your weights. And what yeah. I noticed is the range. Yeah, your your deadlift. Let's let's. Not only did you do something that nobody's ever done on the deadlift, but it's the length that you did it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like you got a five three guy that goes in and does sumo. For me, that doesn't do much for me. But to watch you, someone that I can never complain. I could never complain about deadlifts because you're a foot taller than me and you're mm -hmm. pulling that thing up with a wide grip more than, mm -hmm. than a narrow. And it's like, holy sheesh, that's such a different level. But again, it goes back to the point of you're putting your straws in that range of motion. It's second yeah. level. I always try to, like, like you're saying, you know, uh, make sure that I, um, you know, 
have clean, um, long range of motions, um, finish my reps like um, properly. And um, yeah, it's nice to nice to uh, hear from you that you know that's the key for you to um, um, keep the muscles because you've kept them for. If anyone knows, it's you. You have kept your muscles for forty plus years. It's pretty pretty impressive. Um, um, at that, that level as well, um, it's not like not like you're just in shape. You're you're in um, um, a shape that you know not even the one percent of the human. Uh, are able to stay in um, like only a handful of people in the world are able to get in in in, in your kind of uh, basic strength level but to be able to stay at that level for 40 plus year years um, um, I, think, I think honestly you're the only human alive that has ever done that uh, it's pretty uh, pretty impressive thank you Come, coming from somebody that has taken this health and fitness to the most up and pinnacle level. I appreciate that. And also just being another big man. I appreciate that too. Cause, cause you understand that it's, it's not how you, or if you squat, it's how you squat. It's how you deadlift. Yeah. And I think most people think it's just because you do it, you get it and you don't get it. Like people always wonder like, how are you able to stay injury free? Like how are you able to be that strong, uh, I mean, when I was competing, I, I was able to win show after show um, um, at the best level that, you know, no one is able to do except I was able to do. And and it's uh, because a lot, a lot of guys get injured, you know, competing at such a high level or they get um, fatigued uh, where they just, they, they, they can't train anymore. They can't um, keep the size, the strength, um, um, um. So, I mean, it got to be, you know, a combination of a lot of things. The way we train, the way we eat, the way we take care of our bodies. And, you know, most likely, you know, the genes as well. Like Somebody, uh, not somebody, Paul, Big Show said to me, uh, which is fun for me. I, I got, you know, uh, Paul, Big Show and Billy Gunn. Billy Gunn's another huge human. And he was a uh, ass man on WWE wrestling. He's a hall of famer, but he's a, you know, six, 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 seven, uh, two eighty five, And he's 60 years old. And he, he walks in the room and you're just like, okay, all right. It's just, it's like, all you guys are this big size, but they both said something to me the other day. And I think it's, it's brilliant for any kid out there that's listening to this. And I said something, I said potential, and they both looked at me and said, you know what, potential is a fancy word that the French say that doesn't mean sh And I'm like, wow, wait a minute. I understood what they're saying. It's like, great, you have good genetics. I don't think anybody's going to question, nobody in the world, not a doctor alive is going to question me to say that you have great genetics. But it's not the genetics, it was the work ethic that you put in. It was the time in the gym. It was you eating right. It was all those things plus the good genetics that got you to where you are. Mm -hmm. But it's still, it, we. I have personally seen, and I'll guarantee you have too, we've seen guys come in the gym with all the potential in the world, oh, yeah. and a year later, they're done. A year later, they're mentally gone. A year later, this guy is going to beat you. This guy is the greatest thing in the world, and a year later, they're gone. Can you mm -hmm. talk about that, the difference that you've seen? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of factors at play. You know, there's the stress, there's the, you know, the things you do outside the gym. Um, um, you know, are you willing to not drink? Are you willing to, you know, um, skip the, you know, front parts in life, I guess, you know. But for me, the front parts is, 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 is to train, eat and sleep, you know. If you have that mindset and if you're willing to sacrifice I guess some friendships, um, night out, um, and just live it and breathe it kind of mindset, you know, then you're in the right game. And then you can be maybe the one person. Maybe then, maybe, maybe. only maybe. It doesn't so guarantee. You got to be willing to do that and have that mindset 365 days a year, every single day, for a year, and then another year, and then for a decade, two decades, and just do it. There's no shortcuts. There's no. There's no excuses. 
Um, you know, I've seen guys with a lot of talents that, you know, like to go out, like to party, and then they, you know, they may, might smoke or, you know, have some bad habit, have habit, habits, um, and that's what's killing them. That's what's, you know, taking them a bit back. Um, you know, they might have great genes and, you know, have the, they have, um, you know, they could become great, but they're doing something that, that, that keeping them a bit back. Uh, I've seen a lot, a lot of guys like that. So you gotta be willing to live it, breathe it. And, um, you know, if you love it, you'll do it. If you're that obsessed to become the best, you'll do it. But if you're not, you know, so be it, you'll just be average. We're talking, but you and I are talking about potential and potential is great. But as soon as you start believing the potential, it's a good chance you're going to lose because then you start phoning it in. You start going to the parties. You start calling it. I I'll get tomorrow. I got so much potential. You have to train twice as hard as me because I'm gifted. I think that's a bad attitude to have. And, and, and it's not the right attitude. Even if you got great genetics, it does not mean that they're going to deadlift more than you. They're, they're going to come in and in, in compete against you and beat you. There's a lot of guys with potential and they still can't beat you. Mm -hmm. So agree more. I mean, look at grace, like, 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 like MJ, uh, code brand, those guys fucking lived it and breathed it. You know, they were those were the first guys in the gym, last ones to leave. And they just lived it and breathed it. If you want to become the best, you got to live it and breathe it. Doesn't matter what sport were you doing in life. Like if you want to be the best in anything, at least try to be the best. You've got to literally live it. Uh, and you know, be obsessed and have, have literally no, it's, I say like no life outside of it. Um, you got to be a little bit selfish as well with your training, with your nutrition. Uh, when I say selfish, I mean, I mean, you know, your family might um, have um, a get together. We all come together and eat, but you've got to bring your meal. You've got to eat your meal because you're obsessed. You're obsessed to, you know, you know, give me 1% better. And, 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 and that's what it takes to, to, to become the best or at least try or be in that category that you're willing to be or stay in the state that you are willing to stay in. Uh, you've got to just live it and breathe it. Is that selfish or is that just our work? And at times we have to be imbalanced to be able to live the life we want to be, to be the greatest in the world um, to do that. Cause I, I think like of an attorney, attorney's, you know, when they first start out, they work 80, 90 hours a week, but they're, they're in balance for a moment until they create that success. But we live that in balance. You did something that no other humans ever done. You won the Arnold, you won the, uh, uh, the European world strongest man, and you were, won the world strongest man the same year. And from what I understand, nobody else has ever done that. Yeah. So, so literally I won, I won, uh, uh, the world's strongest man, Arthur Song Classic in Columbus, Ohio, which is one of the um, hardest shows to win. Um, and then I won uh, Eurostones Man. I won uh, a verse, uh, um, um, which was a new show where all the best guys in the world competed in. Um, <laughs> so there, 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 there were four big shows that I competed in that um, I won. And not only won, but I, I dominated. I won it with, 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 with a big lead. Uh, and no one ever has done that. Um, the reason why is because in strongman we compete in, in maybe we were able to compete in maybe 30 different events and in each and every show has different events. And to be able to uh, be good in all those events is, is, is very difficult. And I'm probably the only human, um, well, I am the only human that has won four big shows in one single year. No one ever has ever done that. Um, um, and the reason being is because it's difficult to stay so consistent um, 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 and, 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 and be in, in a good enough shape to not, well, um, get injured. First, you have to make sure that your body's healthy and then you've got to make sure that you're strong in all, all those events because having one week event is going to cost you can cost you a big title i i hope that people are listening to this because 
I'm going deeper into it in the sense of you had to make sure that you made it through it. Uh, you you may, had to make sure that you were good at all the events, which is something that's a rarity. Somebody's great at one event and, and then terrible at another, but he makes up for it in the other events. You were good in everything. And not only good in everything, that you were set up that year to be so dominant that if people talked about this 15 years ago, they would probably be like, oh, there's no human. Nobody can do that. Everybody has good days and bad days. It's never going to happen. And then here I'm sitting across from you talking to you, and you're the one human that's ever been on this planet to do something so enormous and so dominant. Mm. And I hope that you guys get that there was no falter in any part of his game. Mm. But again, you, you, you just set the standard. You just set the standard for the, the, the kids that are growing up that want to be a strong man. I would assume – if you're a strong man or an athlete or or somebody that's good size, go, oh, no, I can deadlift. I can squat. I know somebody that's done it and done it to the most pinnacle human possible level. I don't know about human. I think you're a meta human. I think you're superhero. So I think I hope that the fans comprehend how deep this is. This isn't just he won. It was a dominant human performance over and over and over again. Mm. And that's no, impressive no. to me especially at your age, because when we trained together, you know what I, I noticed? The one thing I took away from you is that you were up for anything and you were willing to learn and listen and apply it and try it. Okay, let's try this. Well, this is a different position. I'm not worried about that. Let's do it. And you just kept going and kept going and kept going. And that was so cool to me to see somebody at your level be willing to try something new or outside of your comfort zone. That's probably why I, why why I was so good because I'm always willing to try new things, willing to work the different muscles, and you gotta be willing to work on your weaknesses. And um, you know um, that's something that I was always willing to do: work on my weaknesses, train the stuff that a lot of people might say is boring. Because if you have a weakness, a lot of people are like, ah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take it easy here because you know I'm not that great in in that specific event. Uh, but when when you have a weaknesses, you gotta uh, work on it and, and train it extra hard so you can become better and be overall um, 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 overall good in every single uh, exercise. Um, and you know, man, I, I remember uh, when we trained together. Uh, you know, when I think back about it, you know, it, it's probably one of those uh, training sessions that I, that I always remember because it was it was not just one of those. You know. Um, 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 you know, you, I meet a lot of um, influencers, people that, you know, are making YouTube videos and they are just making it as a content uh, where it's just all about the shots, about uh, making a uh, video fun for the uh, uh, people. But when I trained with you, it was all about the work. It was all about getting the work done and training hard. Uh, and that's what I loved about, you know, you and the way you trained. You you were there, uh, you know, on a mission. You were there on a mission and you came in and you worked hard. You trained hard. And I actually loved it. Um, it was it was good. Good times. I love it. I love it. Um, you've done something that's impressive to me, too, because I grew up in a, in a martial arts family, powerlifters. And, and I love the transition that you did. And. I don't know if the people know, but you were a uh, basketball player and you were up until you were 19, 20 years old. Uh, 17, 17. Okay. And so you used your height at that time to do something athletic. Mm -hmm. Then you went in and you moved into another category and then you mm -hmm. just moved into another category to where this last couple of years you've been just on a mission, a pinpoint to get your cardiovascular up to, because to me, nobody trains harder than MMA fighters. Those guys train all day long on so many different aspects. It's, it's, it's mind blowing to me how they don't overtrain. Cause I think they most likely do because they, and, and it's an unfortunate that they do so much stuff, but you've moved over into, uh, Dealing with rolling with some of the greatest, the greatest in the world to boxing, to, to pinpoint accuracy with your training for boxing. I thought that was just truly amazing to see it. 
and and how quick you adapted to it. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. So, you know, um, um, first and foremost, I just love, I love sports in general, and I love to shock the body. I love to, you know, being able to shock the body, try new things out, because it's, it's also a good thing to do just to humble yourself. Uh, uh, because when you reach the level where you are the best in something, it's like everyone loves you, you're the best, you know, you have your fan base, and it's like you're the best tour and blah, blah, blah. It gets, you know, at some point you're like, okay, I need a challenge. I need to challenge myself further. And I, and, and, and I saw an opportunity where I was able to challenge myself uh, to the extreme because, you know, let's face it, you know, I, I, before that I'd never done boxing. It was completely new to me. Um, um, and, um, you know, in the beginning I was very humbled, you know, uh, like badly because like I could, you know, <laughs> in the beginning I was, I, I was bad. I was bad. I was stiff. I was slow. Uh, my endurance was shit, so it was, it was hard. But you know, I liked, I like the feeling of um, being humbled, and 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 and, and, and um, uh, you know, just feeling exhausted and you know, feeling challenged. You know, that's what I like. And and boxing gave me that that back to to um, um, you know have to work extremely hard every single day and just dig deep, dig extremely deep. You know, I hate running, but I was running every single day. Um, so it's like, it was a mental thing as well, where I was like waking up, um, 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 like, I'm not like you, you like, you wake up at like 4 a.m. every single morning, like I, that's not for me, but I, I was way waking up at like, like 5 a.m. every morning, go out, run, um, come home, eat breakfast, nap, train again, uh, do some boxing, come home, eat, then train again. Like I was training for some point, like three times a day, just to be able to get my endurance up, improve my boxing skills. And it was just a lot of training and it was a humbling moment, but it was a nice experience. And um, it's uh, something that, you know, I just love to do. I, I, I like that. I like to um, uh, train new things. Um, um, we only live once. That's so different level. But but again, it's it's when anytime I talk to somebody who's the greatest in the world, they all say the same thing. They love, uh, as you put it, being humbled. They love finding something they're not good at and then conquering it. They love to try to master that for themselves, um, even if it's not their craft or something. It, it helps them with their craft. So I can't, I can't fathom anybody that I've ever talked to say, no, no, I know what I'm good at. I stay in that lane. I don't do anything else. You guys all have this mindset that you want to be tested. And, and when you conquer something, it's like you go on to the next conquer. You don't, you don't sit there and go, I'm staying in this lane. I did it. I'm not doing anything else. You keep moving forward. It's, I, I always look back at Arnold. Arnold conquered bodybuilding. Well, he first he conquered, you know, he was a lifter and power lifter. Then he conquered bodybuilding. Then he conquered um, acting. Then he conquered government. And he kept going and kept going. And now he's helping so much. But it's like, it's a cool thing to see the growth as you do this. Yeah. And then you you have some background yourself. You you've done some done some grappling before. You did grappling before you went to the lifting weights, like um, 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 and, and you still are you still doing some grappling? Yeah, yeah. So we, uh, I, I think that was one of the biggest things that allowed me to do American Gladiators as a twenty year old or Battle Dome in my thirties, and then Gladiators again in my forties, is because it's the athletic background from the early years of football, but martial arts and continuing to do the judo and continue through that. It's just, they see the lifting, you know, society sees just my lifting or, or, or moving in those odd positions, but they don't know the whole other, how I got to do what I do. I want to take a second from my show to say thank you to one of our sponsors, Transcend. This is the health and wellness company that my family has chosen to work with. They get your blood work done. So you understand what is going on inside we might look good on the outside, but you never know what's going on. So that's who I'm recommending for you guys out there. Get on over to Transcend. Get your blood work done today. Make sure you're healthy and stay in the game. And what leads me to the next thing, because I see the shirt that you're wearing there. 
Yes. Transcend. Transcend. And I think that's an important thing for, for us to talk about because I always say that if you eat healthy, then you can work out. Mm. But I always try to tell people too, if you're not going to eat healthy, I think working out is actually bad for you because you're breaking your body down and you're never letting it recover. You're just eating bad. You go train. You eat bad. You go train. That's going to break your body down compared to the individual that eats right, goes trains right, and then recovers. But even with that aspect of doing it, there's still age. Age, yeah. you know, we're not 20. We're not we're not 17 playing basketball anymore. We're not, I'm not 20 years old getting gladiators for the first. We we age and we got to make sure our bodies are healthy. How has transcend or how has doing doing blood work helped you? It helped me um, a lot, you know, just being able to see uh, how everything is running, how your body's running, uh, what's missing, what's not missing. Um, uh, it's it's so important for just performance overall. Um, I've been doing blood work uh, for years, uh, a decade. Um, just to take care of my body and making sure that everything is running smoothly. Um, um, and I recommend everyone that listening, uh, doesn't matter lifting or not, um, do your blood work, see, uh, because health is, health is wealth, health, health, health is wealth. And, um, 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 you know, you gotta make sure you gotta, you gotta, you, you wanna know how things are working. If you don't know, then you don't know, and then how are you going to improve? You know, um, um, I um, I'm so happy to be be able be be uh, within the you know trust and team. Um, it's 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 so good because they have such a you know it's just such a great team, and they they help their athletes. They're different. Uh, they're different. You know, they they're help different. their athletes. And, yeah, just great people overall. So, I, I know, think that was the biggest thing for me is obviously I've been not obviously, but I've been asked for years to work with different companies in that aspect. And they're all and I understand society looking at it going uh, for the other companies. Oh, this is what they do. It's for a bodybuilder or something. It's like mm. you guys miss this. Mm. You, you guys are like this whole concept to me is that a majority of society goes shiny car, bad engine. And, and they go around, oh, I look good. Well, I don't know. I don't know what's going on inside of you. You know, it's like I've known too many people. I've been in this since 1980s. I've seen too many of my friends look visually great and die on me the next day. Mm. It's a harsh thing to see. And of all ages, from 20s to 30s to 40s to 50s, and I'm like, I was just with this guy working out, and now he's dead, and he was 45. It was like, I, it, it's a crushing thing to see, and I hate that society looks at blood work as that it's just these people over here need to do blood work, which confuses me. It confuses me because you and me are, if I'm correct, you're a first-time father. Is that right? You have uh, a little one? I have two kids. Two, 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 two of them. Daughter that's uh, uh, turning, uh, she's 13, and then a son who's two. And her son's two. Okay, so my, my son's a year old, and then, right? Um, yeah. Which is going to be great, those two training in a couple of years. Holy cow. It's, it's, <laughs> but yeah. we want to be around for that. Mm. And so it's cholesterol. It's making sure our heart is good, making sure we don't have high blood pressure, make sure if we do, that we take care of it. And it's so many more factors to it than just the T level. Yeah. So when you talk to people about doing blood work, how do you relate that to them? Because I'm trying to get these people to understand that blood work's about health, not about you going to be a competitive bodybuilder or something. Mm -hmm. Well, first and foremost, it's about health. And if you if, if, if you care about your well-being, if you care about your future, then uh, you should do your blood work uh, right away. Like if you haven't, um, I like to do mine. Um, you know, more than the average person, probably twice, three times a year. Uh, uh, but, you know, the average person should do it, in, in my opinion, at least once a year, um, just to um, be in control, be in control um, over your body and, and making sure that everything is running smoothly. If it isn't, you're able to step in and, and, and take actions, uh, not just wait till it's too late. You want to you wanna 
You want to um, uh, uh, make sure that you're able to perform at your highest level. Uh, um, I mean, just think of it this way. Um, if you don't know, you don't know. And you might be missing out. You might be missing out on being able to uh, uh, perform better uh, or live longer. That's that's a big one for me. I, I'm, yeah. I'm obviously a couple decades older than you. But uh, it's always been one of those things. Um, yeah with my family is, is, uh, I lost my dad and I lost my mom. Uh, they were, they were way too young, but it, it makes me think that, Hey, I got to stay on this. I got to make, make sure that I'm okay. Mm -hmm. uh, because I started eating right at nine years old and the amount of food I've eaten over the years and the training. And just mm -hmm. like I try to take care of my, my joints and my connective mm -hmm. tissue more important than the muscle. It's the same way with the body. It's like that blood work is telling you what's going on inside, regardless of how you look. You can look great and have bad blood work. And I you tell that people, great, you can feel great, but something might not might not be right inside. Yeah, it's 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 great that you're doing that too. Um, I love that uh, you got uh, the two year old now because we were talking a little bit about that and being. Um, you know, seeing those kind of future champions, I hope, grow. What kind of steps are you doing right now as a father? Uh, I, I know he's two. There's some things I've been doing from the time he was three months old. And I'm just curious to see uh, how you and, and the baby mama are raising the little one uh, to set him up for the future. I mean, we uh, obviously just first and foremost, you know, um, you know, it's being a father is a gift, first and foremost. You know, it's 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 just a blessing. I I I love being at that. I love being at that. And it's first and foremost just, you know, um what I said before, you know, when I was doing strong, when I was very selfish, I was selfish, but I always made sure I had time for my kids. That's first and foremost. Um and, and being being there their 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 foremost for them and just being there in the moment, you know. Um, um, I'm giving them time, and 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 you know I, I love to wake up, wake up with my son in the morning, um, um, and just sit down, being with him in the moment, you know, reading for him, um, 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 playing with him, talking to him. It's just a cool age where they like start to talk, communicate. Uh, uh, it's a blessing, man. It's a blessing. Um, it's it's uh, it's something that has also driven me. I remember when I had my daughter at the youngest, I was uh, I was uh, I was I was I was twenty. It's something that, something that just clicked inside of me when I when when she was born. Something clicked, and I became so much more driven because I had because I had a, a person that I wanted to make wanted to uh, uh, make proud. I wanted to um, be a better dad. Um, 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 be driven, uh, dedicated, um, 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 and work hard um, for her. Um, and it has always been been like that since she was born. And, and obviously, my son now, uh, it's just you know you want to be a better dad, uh, a, a better husband. Just every single day, like they they are the reason. At least for me, the reason why I just wake up every single morning and I just work on myself and make sure that you know. I'm always there, and I I, I do my best to uh, 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 be a better dad every single single, single day. Um, it's a like it's a it's a blessing, man. It's a blessing. I love it. I love being a dad, and I'm 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 definitely definitely. If you can, we're making more babies. Me and my wife. I promise you. Good. That. We love kids. We love kids. We love kids. Um, yeah. I support that move. I think you need to. I think you guys need to. I think it's a. At least we're gonna try. Uh, I, I, uh, with the help, agree. with the help of always your trust, and you know, making sure you you get your blood work done as we as we just spoke about, because you never know what's you know, what's um, if 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 something is low, you need to maybe get some help to increase things and that and that, you know. Uh, but anyway, what would you? What would you? Uh, I I, almost, uh, I I agree, and there is a switch that goes off in the head. At least for me, it happened like you. Um, you had your first at, at 20. I had my first at 50 mm. and, uh, and that was the switch. And I agree. Um, I'm similar in the sense of when it is me training or getting ready for something or a movie project or whatever it is, I am selfish. And she's so supportive on that going, this is your time to focus. That's your job. 
take as much time as you got. Um, but it is an incredible thing. You wake up and you're like this extra motivation from me being a kid, being selfish and want to be in the champion compared to being a father, I think is, is two times as powerful. And I want to be able to wrestle with him in 10 years. I want to be able to tussle. I want to, I want to at least give up a good fight when he's, you know, 13, 14. Um, sure, so man. yeah, I, I do wake up like you do. And it's like that motivation of, I got to keep going. I got to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. And you're right. Transcend. Yes. For anybody out there, what, again, uh, like you were Satan, the body has so much to do. And regardless of how you feel, you can feel great and there's still something off um, or age catches up to you. Uh, I, I love the fact that I was able to uh, um, have a, a boy, a healthy boy at that my age. Uh, so it's again, it, it just keeps paying dividends. This healthy lifestyle keeps paying dividends. For sure. For sure. Definitely. For sure. Now, I know that you have some other stuff coming up that I don't know if we can talk about right now, but I know that you have a lot of stuff that you are working on and you continue to travel. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything that you can tell us about training and your next steps and uh, anything exciting in your world besides everything being exciting? Yeah, well, I can. Well, this is more secret. You know, this is something that uh, I'm going to announce soon. And I've been teasing my fans a little bit, you know, but I'm, I'm asked every single day, so what's next? So what's your next goal, like big goal? I have a huge goal um, for this year that I haven't announced um, uh, yet. And, you know, to the people listening, you just have to stay patient, you know, um, keep your eyes and ears wide open because the announcement is coming up soon. Um, um, just, just not yet. I know exactly what I'm going to do. And I can tell you this, it's going to be big. It's going to be big. Uh, and, and I'm excited. I'm excited. You know, I'm back, back in the gym, back training, back in, you know, I'm, 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 I'm enjoying it. First and foremost, I love to train. I love to, you know, lift weights. Um, um, it, it comes nat like, it's just like for you, it comes natural to me. Uh, it's just going to the gym doesn't feel like work. Uh, it feels like a fucking vacation. I love to fucking lift and love to lift heavy weights. Um, um, so that, 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 that factor is easy. Um, um, and, um, yeah, like I said, I'll big announcement coming soon. I, I, first, uh, I, I do got to say this off, off notes is that I got to do a couple appearances with you and I got to be next to you at transcend this, uh, uh the Olympia. And it was so awesome. Uh, just your energy, uh, it was you, me, and Phil at at the booth and meeting the fans. But I, I love the fact that there was a similarity on energy. We were it was it was. Uh, I know fans come up to us and say, "Hey, thanks so much for being there." But it's like we were so appreciative because we know what the fans mean to us. It's like yeah. we're happy that they even want to see, it, or at least I do. I'm happy these people even want to see this old man. But you had such a great energy, and a, you were so kind to all your fans that were there. And the line, trust me, folks, this line was a couple hours, and it wasn't for me, but it was for this man right here. Uh, don't be so humble, man. Don't be so humble. You always stay so humble. That's why I like you, man. Um, they were definitely there for you as well. Have you seen yourself? Um, and for the, have you been? Yeah. It was, you know, it's just nice. It's like I love to do these appearances like you do. It's, 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 um, you know, we gotta gotta be willing to give back to the people that you know love us and like to see us. You know, uh, they definitely motivate me to um, you know post on social media, stay active, uh, 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 and just be, I guess, um, uh, appreciative. I guess. Yeah, uh, I think yeah, yeah. I'm just glad they're still willing to come by and stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah, we always appreciate that. It doesn't matter. Like, it's like you know. You're very hum humble, you know. I try to stay always humble um, uh, and appreciate each and every fan that comes and asks for a picture. And I, I try to be always, always available for each and every, every fan. The only time I might say no is if I have a meeting, if I need to go somewhere, or if my son or wife needs me. That's the only time I'm not available if I'm just busy. Otherwise, I'm always available for my fans. There are people that come every day to my gym. So I have my own gym here in Iceland, uh, Post Power Gym. The people that come, every, tourists that come every day to the gym, I always get them time, pictures, 
talk to them unless oh, obviously like training then i just they they are respectful right. that way that they wait and then then i, I can in, in, in interact and talk to them but you know yeah i mean we're just like yeah it's just it's nice to to know that people care and people um um um, um you know I, I think it's cool that you and and i gotta ask this I, and I'll, I'll do two parts here one is i love that you love training and i love that you chase your passion and by you chasing your passion and what you love that motivates the the fan you know there's there's yes. uh, there's millions of uh, uh, the mighty thor's fans out there they're watching you and every day get up and watch your page like what's he doing what lifts he doing what's he is he boxing what's and so you're living your passion and that yeah. motivates them. I think that's a cool, like, I don't know, avalanche or, or the energy gets fed from you to them and they work off of your energy of what you love. But that being said, you love training. How would you tell these people? Cause you don't need, you don't need a kick in the ass to go train. I'm the same way. And you're right. I get up at three in the morning so I can train at four in the morning. And I've been doing it since 1980s. I, I breed, I bleed it. I, I live that it's a vacation. It's my meditation. How can you tell them? How can you tell them to wake up like you do and want to go when they don't have the motivation? You gotta, you gotta find the reason. And, and, and one thing that can help a lot is setting your goals. Um, I have, I have in the past found myself a little bit lost, lost, um, you know, in my own journey. But when I have a, a goal, something to drive towards, then I'm just I'm just focused. Like that's something that you know definitely I think then keeps a lot of people, um, um, at least me, you know, uh, driven and consistent and, and motivated so you know i'll tell you know the people listening if you are unmotivated you don't have um, um the willingness or the drive to wake up and go to the gym or go to the gym after, after a long day of work if you have a goal have something to go towards it's, it's content easier so so find the reason find the goal uh, and I promise you, I promise you, by doing that, you're 10 times more likely to, 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 to be more driven. I agree with you. I think, and I don't think if you guys are watching this and you think, well, I don't want to write down affirmations or I don't want to write down my goals. Eh, that's kind of silly. You know, I'd go to work out to work out. I think it needs to be so powerful. This goal has to be so powerful that it doesn't matter that you're tired it doesn't matter that you're having a bad day it doesn't matter what's going on in life you still go to the gym because that goal is so much and i think for me and i, I bet you for you too is that the goal of i want my son to see somebody that gets up and that's dedicated that says that doesn't say what he does he just does it yeah my son will go uh i didn't ask my my dad went to the gym my dad drug mm -hmm. me to the gym he stayed on point he didn't cheat he did his stuff to the best of his ability and that's the kind of guy i want to be and that that's my motivation now to try to show him i mean i can only imagine you have two you know yeah two 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 kids to to uh that, that helped me to stay driven and more more but 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 my my i i actually want to know what's the reason behind you training at 4 a.m every single morning there's no way and I knew this early on. I knew this as a nine-year-old kid. Um, and, and I got pretty lucky growing up where I did. I, I was training with the best power lifters in the world. Um, and I learned early on that most people failed because they couldn't work out or they, things came up or life comes up. And I felt that when I started training as a kid, it didn't matter that I was that age. I'd get up. I would uh, do the paper out. I'd go work out. I'd go to school. I would never miss. And I stayed with that mindset that I can never miss a workout because I don't need to do anything at four in the morning except workout. I love it. I love it. And, and tell me this. Tell me this, Mike. Do you train fasted? No. I eat. You eat? I so eat. How, so, so, so when do you exactly wake up? I wake up at three. Um, I, I, what, 
What, what meal, meal is by 320. Um, I get a good eight ounces of chicken and a cup of uh, oatmeal, um, some nuts and a little bit of fruit. Uh, and uh, I'm at the gym. But I'm one of these guys, too. I could eat five minutes before I train. And yeah, I'm the same way. I'm the same yeah. way. Right? I just eat and go. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. can just eat, I, eat, yeah. eat afterwards. And I just, I've never, and that's the lucky thing is I knew that four o'clock would never miss. Yeah. But I've just been that way. That's awesome. That's so, so, cool. so I'll wrap this up with one final question. Uh, uh, what is your advice for these youngsters that are coming into the lifting world that uh, would like to be, you know, or, or beat your records. What, what's your recommendation for these youngsters? So first and foremost, enjoy the journey. You got to enjoy it. You got to enjoy it. If you don't enjoy it, you're, you're in the wrong business. You're in the wrong business. Can I ask you something real quick? Would yeah. you lift? Would you lift if you made no money from it? I would hundred percent, hundred percent. I have had so many opportunities to, so many other pathways in life to make more money. Uh, but, uh, I mean, I did boxing just to challenge myself, uh, but I could have stayed in boxing and, and made a lot more money in boxing. But it's not about the money for me. It's about, I mean, I love to challenge myself. And I also, it's, it's obviously you, 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 I just love to lift weights, man. I just love I just, it. I got them. We're twins. It. We're twins. Yeah. And I, I tell these kids and I tell them, they go, uh, it, it must be nice to be able to make a living from this. I didn't make a living from this when I was a teenager. No. Uh, you know, it, it's like it, you set yourself up and I would do this and I do lift because I love it. And I, and I could feel that when we train together, it's like, I love the battle. Mm -hmm. I love that freaking fight in the gym within myself or with my training partner or whatever it is, it's a fun thing. And I would do this for free. Yeah. Same here. I, if I, if I, if, if no one would, you know, if I didn't have the social media platform that I have, um, if I would just start all over again and, and I was at this eight, um, um, no one knew me, I would go to the gym. I would not, not go to the gym. I would hundred percent go to the gym. hundred percent. I love it. I love where are you, where are you living now? Where's uh, your location? Most so of the time. home right now, it has always been Iceland. I live, I'm born and raised in Iceland. I live in Iceland. Um, I'm close to the capital Reykjavik. I live in a, in, in, in a town called, called Kopo, uh, well, Karlabad. My gym is in Kopo. It's, it's all attached. It's all very close in, in the same area. Um, and yeah, um, I just love, love being here. It's, 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 it's peaceful. Um, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm obviously like moving to the States would maybe bring me more opportunities, um, uh, easier to collab with people and do other things, maybe for sponsor sponsorships and, and everything else. But, you know, I just, I'm very close to my family, very close to my family. And I just love my place. I, I love Iceland. You know, that's I why I've stayed here. Well, me and Mona and Titan will come over there and visit you at your your place and and your gym and get some training in because I, I've never been to the uh you know I'm a, I'm a halfy so I got to see the uh, the motherland over there. And, uh, you guys uh, are always want to come. It would be it would be great to have you guys over. Uh, uh, and uh, I, I missed the training session. The training session we had was 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 great, and I would love to have more sessions in with you. Uh, and you guys are always welcome. I love it, brother. Thank you so much again for hanging. I cannot wait for the next appearance. Um, and and you, and everybody that's watching, go follow for his big announcement that's coming soon. Uh, this is, uh, again, incredible. Thanks for taking the time today. My pleasure, man. Always, man. Always, man. Um, you're a huge... Um, uh, people might not believe be, believe this, but but that's just fact. You, you my, are a huge inspiration to me um, just in day-to-day day -day life, you know. Uh, the things that you've done uh, for your soul and uh, the way you're able to stay in shape for so many years, um, it's just so impressive to me. And uh, uh, so just thank you, Mike, for inspiring thousands, millions of people around the world. And uh, thank you for being you. Uh, thank you for uh, having me on your show. And I cannot wait until next time, my friends. All right, bud. Thank you, my friend. Whew. 
the world's strongest man, a PR of a deadlift. If I'm correct on this, I think it's a 1105 with straps he did, uh, which no human has done since, from what I understand. Um, even if, if if somebody does do that, his height, to me, is the most impressive thing doing a, doing what he's done. Um, but just uh, uh, you always, I always talk about this: the gentle giants. He knows how strong he is. Uh, he knows what a monster he is, and so he he has a soft and kindness to him. Uh, when he meets his fans, and again, he's always been very kind. We trained years ago, and the one cool thing, again, I go back to this and I said it in the show, is that no matter what I suggested or tried or explained why I was doing what I was doing to stay healthy for my career, he says, I'm doing that. Let's try that. Let me do that. Uh, and it, and it, again, it was, it was cool to train with him. We'll get some more training in with him. But he's somebody that I think – Again, I, I love the fact that I get to do what I do and I get to hang out with these superheroes, uh, these walking superheroes. This man is technically a walking superhero. He's, he's something that has never been on this planet before. That strength, that size, that athletic ability and to do what he's done in, in Strongman and then switch to something else like boxing and, and uh, transform so quickly that he did. It's a cool thing. And then uh, I saw some wrestling and he's rolling uh, with the, the greatest jiu-jitsu man ever. So it is cool to watch him. And then it's also cool to watch him because he's a couple decades younger than me to see him as, a, a again, he has a new baby boy uh, a year younger than Titan. And I get to see that little, that little uh, again, I guarantee this kid's going to be something. But to see him grow up around a dad like that, that's so motivated and positive. Here's the, yeah. Let me, let me clarify. I said motivated. I think it's more positive. He he walks around appreciative to what he has. He walks around appreciative to his fans. He walks around kind to individuals. Uh, I think that's one of the biggest things I took away from him and some of the other guys I get to hang out with is they're really just positive, um, don't work off a of negative, uh, don't let the negativity uh, interfere in their lives, and they just really are a positive influence on people. So, again, go follow him on what's coming up. He's a great guy. I've spent hours with him, and he has so much to teach you guys, too. In, obviously, if you want to do strongman, powerlifting, or whatever that is, the way he trains and the way he sets his goals – is something you can learn no matter what you do, no matter what you do. The way he set his goal to go from something the best in the world to do a sport that he wasn't good at and then to dominate within a short period of time. That's a goal that can help his mindset and his approach to it is mindful and helpful for anybody no matter what you're doing. And that's it, man. Thanks for hanging out today. This is Mike O'Hearn, and this is the Mike O'Hearn Show on Generation Iron. I will see you guys next week with another MetaHuman.